Something is rotten in the heart of Mainframe. Bob quips this near the end of Gigabyte, and it would seem very accurate. Something evil from the outside has entered the system, and the threat it presents is on another level, even when compared to Hexadecimal. But for this moment, everything seems okay. Well, except that Mouse is still in Mainframe and acting weird. And people are getting abducted. What have you been cooking? What? Huh? Trust No One was written by Mark Laren Yun, with story by Gavin Blair, Mark Laren Yun, Phil Mitchell, Ian Parison, and Susan Turner. The main cast includes Michael Benier as Bob, Kathleen Barr as Dot, Matthew Sinclair as Enzo, Michael Donovan as Al, Cecil, Mike the TV, and Fawn, Gary Chalk as Al's waiter, Louise Valance as Mouse, Scott McNeil as Fax Modem, and Gillian Anderson as Data Nolly. A pretty significant tone shift here for a remote episode, isn't it? This creepy scene cuts almost immediately to Mouse walking into Dot's diner where Bob asks her to sit and have a drink with him. While there, a police binom runs in and informs his chief, who's sitting at the counter and eating donuts, that there's been another abduction. Bob inquires into this, but before he can get an answer, Enzo runs in, trailed by Andrea and another binom, and tells Bob that Dot is missing, and they can't find her anywhere. Miss Matrix failed to pick up young Andrea and Enzo from school. I thought it would be prudent to escort them home, what with the abductions and all. Would someone tell me what abductions? We've had reports of sprites vanishing from level 31. Yes, the latest being Al's waiter. Excusez-moi, but Madame was going to a meeting with Monsieur Al. Bob goes into serious high gear, knowing that Dot is in danger. He heads straight for level 31, which we've not seen since the great brain robbery, and asks Mouse to escort the others to the principal office. As soon as Bob leaves, however, Mouse asks Miss Brody to do it, and takes off after Bob, unbeknownst to him. Bob storms in and asks one of the servers, a dude on roller skates, some questions. But the server doesn't know anything, other than that Dot was supposed to meet with Al, but never showed. The conversation is overheard by two others. You ask a lot of questions, Guardian. Who are you? CGI Special Agent Fax Modem. CGI Special Agent Data Nully. We couldn't help overhearing you. You're looking for a missing person? Yeah. Dot and Matrix has disappeared. Do you know anything about it? There's been a rash of disappearances in mainframe. Fong sent us to investigate the most recent case. Al's waiter. You work for Fong? We should talk. A brilliant bit of homage to the X-Files, which would have been in its third season when this aired. We see a shift to the alley behind Al's diner, where Mike the TV and a few binomes are shooting a video about the recent abductions. The camera crew are shaking in their boots, while Mike walks along nonchalantly. The camera pans and we see Mouse standing around a corner. She communicates through a device on her arm to someone named Turbo. We then see a numeral walking along, and Mouse says she's found another victim. Hmm. Meanwhile, Bob has begun to speak with Modem and Nolly, who are convinced Mouse is behind the attacks. Modem's reasoning? He believes Mouse is a web creature. Listen, when I was just a little node, I saw my sister taken by a strange creature. And it had fangs, just like Mouse. Excuse me, but is your partner completely random? Not completely. Okay, why didn't it take you two then? I don't know. I was reading comic bites in bed, and when I peeked out from under the covers, I saw something hovering over my sister. Then I pointed my flashlight at it, and a moment later, it and my sister were gone. Bob doesn't believe him, and though he shows sympathy at Modem's loss, he all but calls him crazy. 
Odom goes into full-on conspiracy theorist mode, again, channeling the show the characters are inspired from, and mentions that there is no user, and it's all a hoax from the Guardians, that they send the GameCubes to enforce the myth. Bob tells them off for being completely quackers, but they are interrupted by a report on the nearby television from Mike about the latest abduction, number five, the same numeral Mouse was eyeing. Mike interviews a lady who immediately runs away, but this funny scene is ended quickly when Mike's film crew disappear. Guys! Hello? <laughs> this isn't funny, guys. Now, come on! Guys? Whenever terror grabbed Mike lets him go, and Modem hearing the screech of the monster directs Bob and Nolly outside. Bob tells everyone in the diner to clear out, and the agents march out into the alley, fighting Mouse standing over Mike's unconscious body. They pull out guns and tell Mouse to stand down, but she destroys her guns with her sword. Bob catches up, and Mouse asks him to let her go. When he refuses, she kisses him and runs away, but not before Bob can place a tracer on her. Bob decides to follow her while Nully and Modem stay with Mike. When Mike comes to, he mentions that there was a flash of light, and that scared the creature away. Modem gets an idea, and they head back to CPU headquarters to get something. Meanwhile, Bob continues to follow the trace. He calls Fawn using Glitch, and tells him that there is a web creature in mainframe, but it's definitely not Mouse, because he finds bits of shed skin. Ew. He follows the path of skin shedding into an abandoned warehouse. Meanwhile, Mouse informs this Tarbo person that she's found the creature's nest and that she will free the mainframers. Reboot takes its next major step up in maturity as it shows off this eerie sight as Mouse walks through a collection of Dendians wrapped in strange cocoons. As she continues walking through this macabre scene, she eventually comes to the pod holding Dot. Mouse and the audience can clearly see Dot is being leached of energy as long tendrils are hooked into her at various places. Remember how Gigabyte, a virus born from this thing, could absorb energy? Exactly. Mouse cuts Dot down, and a horrid shriek rises up. This attracts the attention of both Bob and the CGI agents, who have entered the building, and they run for the scene. Mouse and Dot get the rest of the victims free, but something else approaches as well. A terror from the web. This is a web creature, a strange floating abomination of tentacles and shadow from another place. God, I love Eldritch Horror. Mouse is helpless to rescue Dot, but Modem and Nully arrive and shine their flashlights at the creature. It freezes in place and drops Dot in a panic. It is physically hurt by bright light. Bob arrives and tells Mouse to flee with Dot, but she insists that they'll need backup and contacts Turbo again, sending him an image of the creature and calls for reinforcements. Bob recognizes the name immediately, and we finally learn who he is. A guardian. In fact, several guardians sit around a dimly lit table, as we've seen change, discussing that they must act now before the creature spreads to the rest of the net. We learn through Bob that the Guardian Collective is a little less altruistic than Bob is. Mouse has been duped. The guardians aren't going to send help, as their protocol for finding a web creature is destruction of the system to prevent its spread. Bob says there is probably an explosive somewhere. Meanwhile, Turbo sets it off, and we learn more about this mysterious character. We're all agreed then. Releasing codes now. I'd like to 
like to be alone for this. Bob and I go back a long way. That's the best I can do. Good luck, Bob. And I'm so sorry, Mouse. This is so cool. It's been a long time coming, but we finally have some exposure to the Peacekeeping Corps that Bob pledges allegiance to. Meanwhile, a security team arrives in the principal office with heavy-duty floodlights to hold the creature at bay. Bob realizes that the explosive is the communicator that Mouse has been given by Turbo and runs off to try to get it away from mainframe. Mouse realizes she's done more harm than good and is left to hide her head. The lights seem to be holding the beast in place, but it constantly thrashes, trying to get out of the beam's path, and the CPU forces constantly have to shift to keep the beam focused. Bob flies up into the air with the explosive. It goes off, and although Bob is unharmed, he managed to toss it away from him, it creates a massive tear, larger than we've ever seen before. Because Murphy's Law tends to be true, the web creature also manages to escape at the same time, and reaching the tear with supernatural speed, converts it into a portal. A portal to the web. You see, Nolly, the web is out there. No, Modem. It's here. This is it, Fong. Prepare for war. Wow. What a rush. You have some time to catch your breath now, because the next episode will bring a new era to Mainframe. Things will never be the same again. For now, Trust No One shows off, once again, the series' ability to balance a lot of themes and tones in one story, with obviously a huge emphasis on oppressive fear and the terror of this unknown entity. It also takes Reboot through its next big maturity step, as the atmosphere gets grimmer, we're introduced to a terrifying threat, actual guns are used, and we meet the Guardian Council, who are willing to destroy an entire city to protect the rest of the net. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, as Mr. Spock would say. Trust no one is the tense gasp before an all-out scream, and it has absolutely succeeded in its main goal, getting us glued to the television, waiting for the next tale. It is most definitely a three out of three.